the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. The man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory. Lord our God showing us His justice and righteousness together to be called as holiness. Later showing us His mercy and grace. Teaching to us Whomsoever he receiveth, he chasteneth them, so that we shall be the partakers of his holiness. And teaching to us, when we suffer for his joy, mourning for his glory, he shall fulfill us back with the great desires of our heart, which will be for a true believer to ask according to his will, to honor his word above his name. Earlier than us, so many great men who led their life for Christ. Standing in front of them, we are nothing. The present Christendom pastor teachers have changed the designation of a cheap shepherd, poiman into something what they call as reverend, a right reverend, a doctorate. In the Bible itself, the t legitimate title given for my Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. And in the present Christendom, from the way they have fallen, right from the time of John Bunyan in 16th century, his life his pilgrimage process. If we would ever read, we would only find for him, given a great testimony to teach to us, that Lord God hath shown us all the way how we have to move from hell to heaven by believing in Christ. He strove all the way from the gate of hell, where we were, to the gate and calling to the gate of heaven. And he calls your going with flowers out of his own garden. Behold how the promises, invitations, calls and encouragements, which are like lilies, they constantly lie around you that is through the word of the Lord our God. Be careful and take heed that you don't tread them under thy foot, but rather reverence it more than your life to teach this great and infallible word of the Lord our God. Dear brethren, the bona fide work of the pastor teacher. If ever we would think in the past dispensations, it would be for us to all the time 
that the bona fide gift is from the head of the department of the church given to us from the heavenly university the heavenly degrees not the qualifications of the earthly degrees why we make ourselves to be the past teachers under the bona fide gift given to us in eternity past it is to fulfill his word expound his word a little part at least to be paid by us for those sufferings of my christ which he bore on the cross the vicarious sufferings which we cannot pay but the mental agony of his sufferings which he wants to make this church to be perfect and complete in all knowledge according to his will teaching and training us up and making us to realize this great and unique glory that if ever we are we have to be the born slaves of my christ becoming the prisoners of my christ expounding the word as christ our lord of god did in john 1:18 through the process known as exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations if we aren't coming to do that though christ our lord of god has bestowed upon us this great bona fide gift to male believers yet we shall find the present trend where people are mourning not for the truth but to establish lies upon lies the true believer in christ looking upon the standards of this people will certainly mourn He certainly mounts that these people are not able to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. These people have lost the importance of the word of the Lord of our God to reign in our pulpits. The ultimate authority between Adam and Eve, it was not Eve but Adam, but Adam lost to Eve. And Eve being deceived by Satan. the present christianity what we call the christendom has also replaced the ultimate authority of the past teacher to the trends of the denominations the great men in the past if they wouldn't be called as pastors they would be certainly no authority for them to teach in the pulpits because the great shepherd of the sheep is my christ he is the great pastor or the chief pastor the mega pastor he has kept us to teach through the bona fide work of the pastor teacher fulfilling the works through the prophets and the apostles who have done their work in writing the complete canon of scripture from the old testament and again the new testament and for some the work of evangelism without the work of evangelism the unbelievers would not come to know my christ it's outside of the church and to some inside of the church to work where church is the university the pastor teacher is the dean every believer being a professor to teach the right word of the lord of god to the angels that's the priority we have that's the privilege we share and we enjoy to teach to the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the authorities not just some facets of the word but the manifold wisdom of my christ the much variegated colored wisdom of my christ the multifaceted wisdom of my christ and that's why we have been kept alive as a pastor teacher still this gift not to a layman not to the one who has been qualified in the earthly degrees 
not to the one who thinks he has the gift given to them and join some theological colleges and when he comes to the church Lord God has not chosen him and is not representing the teaching work of my Christ which is his office gift being the pastor to fulfill the word if ever you have been chosen by the Lord our God he says in Colossians 1 25 to fulfill his word even the mystery doctrine Christ in us the hope of glory the plosius riches by that we warn everyone we exhort everyone we reprove everyone we teach everyone to make every believer perfect and complete in all knowledge the earthly degree men may not understand about these terms but the one who has that heavenly degrees who has laid down their life to Christ worrying all the time mourning all the time and teaching all the time to the flock the importance of this great word like in the case of John Bunyan the man who died at the age of 60 because of the problem of his health the man who faced such hard trials the man who experienced the temptations of Satan and he says Lord God tempteth not beyond what you cannot sustain we mourn today upon such great men who led their lives to Christ who are going to replace such key men again in our pulpits the earthly degree one cannot it doesn't need necessary that you need to go to the theological college but wherever you are bow down your knees and ask the Lord of our God wherewith you love to desire always a right and true fellowship with him it is he who is going to train you up Elisha asked Elijah give me twofold of thy portion of thy spirit Elisha Elijah said you're asking a tough part a hard part and you know what they're fighting over there they're fighting over in the terms of endowment in the past dispensation it was not what we are enjoying today the enablement the involuntary ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit what we are enjoying today in the past it was only on certain few and for that Elisha asks Lord I want twice of the of the spirit upon me and today do you know who we are we cannot limit the spirit of my Christ we are infinitely greater than Elijah we are infinitely greater than Elisha to ask the spirit and he said to the disciples to ask but when it comes to us in the church age we have been mandated to be filled controlled under the indwelling controlling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit not only just to walk in it but to march in it we the church age believers dear brethren whether you believe it or not in the great qualification given to us in this church age Elisha stands nothing before us Elijah had a portion of the spirit Elisha has taken twice the portion of the spirit it was under the process of endowment but we are now under the process of enablement enlightenment we are born in Christ in the spirit we have been baptized into that great royal family of my Christ into the spirit we are sealed until the day of redemption as an earnest deposit by the Holy Spirit of my Lord and in fact indeed the Lord God the Holy Spirit bears with witness with our spirit that we are the children of my Christ and this great men who have done their lives for us as an example as an ensample to lead to redeem the time every breath even though we kneel down and preach 
and expound the word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21, we are not able to match the lives of those great men who have led their lives to teach us and to set forth for us the way how the heavenly degrees will work in Christ. But the present pastor teachers don't believe these words. They love to talk about the denomination. They allow to reason about their trends in the assemblies. What is happening, how it is happening, where it is happening, why it is happening. They allow to brag and say, we are having two offices, we are having two ordinances. Everything they want to talk. And they say more than 15% of the people in America today they belong to Baptist. But they know not the lives what these people have spread. Like Benjamin Keach, John Gill, John Bunyan, and followed by Charles Spurgeon. Even Charles Spurgeon writes a note. A note upon John Bunyan to say he was an authorized King James Version, a walking Bible. The blood group of him is always be blind. In that be blind terms, Declaring about the work of the pastor teachers based out upon them, John Bunyan writes a note taken from the terms pertaining to the book of Judges. This is very, very important for us to learn. Because, dear brethren, he had studied the authorized version, he says, Charles Spurgeon witnessing to John Bunyan till his whole being was saturated with scripture. And though his writings continually make us feel and say, this man is a living Bible, why it is? Prick him anywhere and you will find that his blood is be blind. The very essence of the Bible flows from him. He cannot speak out, speak out without quoting a text of scripture. For his soul was being full all the time with the word of the Lord of God. And here we need to look. Bunyan reverenced the word of the Lord of God and trembled at the prospect of dishonoring it. He trembled at the prospect of dishonoring it. Let me die with the Philistines as Samson quotes in Judges 16.30 He says, let me die with the Philistines having that context because he has corrupted and the day is how much he has lived on that day he killed more than all says the word So quoting this Bunyan he says, let me die with the Philistines rather than deal corruptly with the great blessed Word of God rather than to deal corruptly. And this is what he says for us. To live upon God who is invisible is to live upon God in his word. And to serve and suffer out of a life in God is to serve and suffer out of a life drenched with the word of God. This is how we shall live, this is how we shall suffer, and this is how we shall help those who love get safely to the celestial city. And then he says, to live upon God who is invisible is to live upon God in his word. To suffer and to serve out a life in God is to serve and suffer out of a life drenched with the word of God. And thus, dear brethren, in order to deal corruptly with the blessed word of the Lord of a God, John Bunyan says, it is better for you to die. Not the death what the Bible calls for them. As the word of the Lord of a God says, 
the seed should die first they haven't put to death their all lives in those terms neither they are interested to look their lives in those terms the manner of the mannerism of death what they put in our lives dear brethren what we call in the present church age they love to put to death the true character of my christ being demanded in their lives because they mind earthly things they love to teach earthly things and they don't even have a look upon the heavenly things john bunyan the man being taken by the lord of a god for his work on this earth demanding and showing for us in the church age the life that we can live purely depends upon honoring his word to the highest not to deal any way his word in corruption but to lay down our lives in due of that heavenly decrees what he has trained us up every day kneeling down in his presence should certainly be a greater life than elisha or elijah by the enablement ministry of lord god the holy spirit enlightenment ministry of lord god the holy spirit seeking and searching truth all the time dear brethren sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale heaven wonders of the word of the lord of a god what our lord of a god has preserved and kept for us today in eternity past because every day is unique as long as we have breath in our nostrils every day we need to come back and learn the right word if we don't make up our time to listen to the doctrine then you will not make up your time for anything else in this earth you are grieving and squelching and vexing and deceiving lord god the holy spirit the greater the time you spend upon grieving and squelching and vexing and deceiving you are incurring curses upon your own self limiting lord god the holy spirit and not performing his will so dear brother and we shall have a word of prayer and come back and continue sanctify yourselves to look upon this great pale wonders of the word of the lord of a god infinitely divine holy father as we're going to share these things as you open and kept and reserved for us this great words by john bunyan to encourage us if you would corrupt thy word o lord he would say comparison to samson let me die rather than corrupting thy word as the same thing papa sul paul states for us we are not of men who corrupt thy word o lord but deal with honesty and that amat essence should come unto thee for us as you stated in the book of ezekiel as jeremiah as well the great work what you are, what which you have intended for the life of the pastor teachers even in ezekiel 34:16 the right duty of you what you say that you will rebuild back bind them that they are wounded in thy grace and mercy because of thy righteousness and justice anything or everything oh lord you have given for us only to know to taste and to handle thy word accurately so father as i'm going to study these things today from the life of this john bunyan and some other great men which have reserved and kept for us to learn from them we pray lord god the holy spirit will challenge our lives as well as elisha had two part of the portions of the spirit upon elisha what he had greater than that we have to dear lord infinite we with our thinking are limiting it to lord but the grace is sufficient for us to build them up every day the kaza karkio strength not handling the word in corruption but in truth rightly dividing the truth 
Help us, Father, as we're going through these things. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Whenever we read upon such biography of this man, it's a great encouragement for us not to deal the word of the Lord of a God corruptly. Not just the word of the Lord of a God, but called as a blessed word of the Lord of a God. Until and unless we become be blind, until and unless we have been tested the good word of the Lord. And as we can say, the great things with Isaiah, who is the source for us, all the time declaring, a man of unclean lips, designing to understand in our lives, that though we are in the flesh, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be infinitely greater than Elisha or Elijah, we can declare the complete glory of the Lord of our God given for us from the 66 books. And yet not being put to death in your standards, yet not being put to death in your lives, yet not understanding, that the Lord our God demands purity in our inward parts. He claims even the heavens to be unpure before Him. And then loves to build up His dwelling place in us, says Isaiah 66 too. And that He has saved and kept the best, that's we the church age, till the rapture of the church. Every believer conforming to the image of his dear beloved son, to the praise of his glory, to the highest. Every believer being available, wherewith he demands. Though the world may rotten up, yet I have a remnant for me in every age, who walk with me in truth. Not like that Pharisee, but like the sinner who has condemned himself and knows that he is a sinner and he asks, Lord, forgive me, not even rise up his head. Whereas the Pharisee who is a self-righteous one says, I am not like that sinner. I fast twice a day, twice a week. I pay my tithes regularly. See, I wear white robes. <laughs> Lord of our God calls those white robes as ministers cloth over you. And he was not justified, says the scripture. Today we are not able to realize what are we, what is our position. You have been justified in Christ, thus you are not, not, not anyway having any condemnation over you. You have been set free in Christ. And that doesn't mean that you have been free from the guilt of the sins, what you are performing. But it meant to say, you should be ashamed that you are dealing with such great holy Lord of a God. And as the Bible teaches for us, that the Ananias and Sapphira, the way they deceived Lord God, the Holy Spirit, instantly they have been put to death. And yet you shall be ashamed to look. And Lord God remembers us that we are of dust and if he would remark or mark upon us the iniquities who could stand, says the Bible. So we cannot stand in our sins before the Lord of our God, yet he comes up with grace, giving us first his chastisement of holiness and justice to be partaking of his divine nature. He comes up with grace later on. Thus we need to move from milk to bread, from bread to meat. What an important stage it is for us in this church age. Looking upon the time, we should be the communicators of Bible doctrine. Looking upon the time, the work of the bona fide work of the pastor teacher has to be like John Bunyan, not to corrupt the word. Like Apostle Paul, Line upon line, word upon word, precept upon precept, thus he concludes in Acts chapter 20 to teach to, teach to us 
that we also ought to be pure from the blood of our fellow brethren to whom we have been held as a care or in charge to give account says the word in the Greek but the word in the Greek is logos but in the English it's account what is that logos from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 the entire counsel of the Lord of our God we need to deal it with ex Jomai and not in corruption during the time of John Bunyan, maybe he might have not had the privilege because when we look upon his life, by the age of 16 he was into the military, from there he came out, by the age of 20 he was being married and his wife made him to look upon the word of the Lord of a God. And then he had a great thirst to know and we look upon his biography, that's the second issue. Maybe he didn't have the time and the privilege like the way how William Carey was absolutely determined in his mind. Though he walked five miles into these Baptist associations to learn the word and he was not satisfied. So he came back to dig the word from the original languages of the scriptures and he went along to teach the truth. In the present Christendom we are not handicapped. That's what I meant to say. We cannot say I do not know Hebrew, I do not know Greek. You have interlinear, you need to go back to the original language of the scriptures until and unless you come back and put your foundation in the original language of the scriptures and exegete the word and isolate the word and categorize the word and in order to rightly divide the word with dispensations it's not a denom it's not a denomination neither a cult dispensation is to say for you the differentiation between the past the present and the future the things that have been fulfilled the things that are right to be fulfilled the things that have happened the things which are deadlocked in the church age particularly the prophecy there is no fulfillment of the prophecy this is a gap period between the first advent and the second advent of my christ sandwich between these both advents A dispensation gives for us a clear cut of picture in the church age. What is the right fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and why the tongues have been seized, miracles and healings have been seized? The sovereign grace of my Lord continues. If ever there is an unbeliever to come to know my Christ, but no longer in tongues, the gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues in their human, human emotional ecstasy with the Angus Samutas demon controlling their vocal cords has made many people to be far away from the truth. These are the men who are corrupting the world. These are the men who love to heal you with miracles. These are the men who love to do with their kerchief business, with their oil business, rather than the word of the Lord of a God, rather than the word of the Lord of a God. To taste and look upon that invisible Lord of a God, it is what we need to feast and enjoy every day with the right word of the Lord of a God being thought accurately, not with corruption. In Luke chapter 16, we look upon that great testimony given by Abraham to say, let them listen to the word and to the prophet's word. He did not ask, let them listen to the miracles, let them listen to the healings, let them look upon the tongues. For an unbeliever, if there is any miracle or healing, it is purely to come back to know my Christ, the option given to him upon the prayer of the righteous one but honor not to the righteous one but to the Lord of a God alone for a believer who has been given a grace once again to come back to life if there is a miracle to be saved if there is a healing that has happened purely through the word of the Lord of a God that it has to be not from any other source because we mourn for spiritual ones, not for the physical ones, neither for the material ones. My fellow men are perishing without knowing the truth. My fellow men are dying out without witnessing the word of the Lord of a God. My fellow men are not enjoying union with Christ, the heavenly degree number one, heavenly degree number two, the anointing work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, uh, the work of number three, which is nothing but for us, the experiences of the temptations of Satan that are hawkering in your life. And my fellow men are perishing out without enjoying the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though it dwells in them permanently, but fellowship is temporary whenever they grieve, squelch or wax, they have been moved out. That is what, there is no controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in their lives. It is not the way how the tongues people crowd claim. 
in order to differentiate this pit holes which they have made or manholes what they have made under the name of denominations dispensation is a subject for them to learn when it is pre-canon period when it is post-canon period dispensation is a term for us to use glossolalia from AD 30 to AD 70 those 40 years of evangelism by making them to understand what is the right word talking them in their own languages rather than this they have come up to teach lies upon lies with the angastromythos demon controlling the vocal cords and what they end up where they end up they say our denomination is great not realizing after the completion of the canon of scripture from AD 96 the things pertaining to the Lord of a God to the highest what they ought to be how they ought to be always demanding for us in the pulpits to teach the right word the accurate word and nothing else than that all the time the right duty of the pastor teacher not to corrupt the word but to teach and preach the word of the Lord of a God and if ever you have a chance to access it out in the PDF drive in the Google to Chrome or any other method of your access to it then go back and search and dig down you are downloading many things pertaining to Spurgeon sermons or some other things like CH McIntosh where you can find them or Vines Expository Dictionary wherever whatever it may be helpful for you to the tools of this word of the Lord of a God go back and take it and look at see you will find the pain of those great men who lay down their lives in those sermons they haven't come to talk in tongues they haven't believed upon miracles they haven't taught about healings the primary work is to get you to evangelism their primary work is to see that you have been saved and next to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine fulfilling first Timothy 2 4 none to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his word Indeed, people come. People come in times of troubles. Dear brethren, you are indeed called to put to death in Christ. The fellow pastor teachers who are standing in our pulpits, if they would truly understand the legitimate title given to you is pastor teacher, then you are under that great shepherd of the sheep. The title for your reverence, the title for your right reverence, the titles wherewith you call in the terms pertaining to everything which will make you to realize doctorate or any other way you go through. They will not make you to be fit under that great title for my Christ which is in Hebrews 13:20, the great shepherd of the sheep it has been called 4166 called in strong number comparison as poemen here yeah, John Bunyan also talks about poemen any one of the great men in the past purely talk about poemen they are not having any other discourse apart from that poemen this shepherd 4166 is nothing but head of the church the ultimate authority for the pastor teacher given to them in the prison epistles of Ephesians chapter 4 in verse number 8 and following distributing the gifts he gave again the same word poemen which is nothing but shepherd and if Christ our Lord of a God is the great shepherd of the sheep given this work of the pastor teacher to handle this word accurately he demands in us as we can call to lay down our soul and not to corrupt the word of the Lord of God. Dear brethren, in Ezekiel 34 16, wherever the places I have gone, knelt down and wrote that verse. 
where with the pastor should rise up again for my Christ. The things what we talk over here should certainly prick our hearts. That Lord our God has called us to be so great. Sword of the Lord our God, for which cause he has chosen us in the church age. And what is that? Sore, great, strong sword, we the church age believers. In Ezekiel chapter 34, in verse number 16, we read, Christ our Lord our God giving to the pastor teacher the right duty. I will seek that which is lost. I will bring back that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with churchmen. Do you know who are this fat and the strong? The people who are still believing not. The church has to be handled by the pastor teacher, the male bona fide gift, not with a female. Who haven't believed yet, reverence and right reverence and doctorates are not for the order of the pulpit in the plan of my Christ. Reverence and right reverence being made by man according to their clergy of dignity to have respect in their supermarkets, to have respect in the people, to have respect in the terms pertaining to some government officials. The great shepherd of the sheep, he himself is poiman, then we have been made to be pastor teachers to the church. Wherewith you have been called not to corrupt the word of the Lord of a God, but rightly handling the word of the Lord of a God. That's what he says in 2 Timothy 2.15. For that cause he demands, study to show thyself approved unto God. Be diligent enough to prove your documents examination before Christ. And that cannot be possible if you are not becoming Biblia. That cannot be possible if your soul doesn't have the essence of the word of the Lord of a God opening up your mouth as the divine oracles of my Christ seasoning the word of the Lord of a God in grace. Colossians 4, 6 Wherewith with the people who are not having wisdom we talk to them wisdom and not any mannerism of scientific process where the people are interested to talk about nanotechnology, biotechnology, genome technology or the terms pertaining to CPH4 whatever it could lead them to think resurrection or the rapture of the church has become long back and now we are not awaiting for the rapture we need to transform by using this technology like the cloning which has occurred like the humanoids which have come up stupid morons these are and there are pastors who train them up in those ways as well <laughs> the people who know not the truth love lies they have the shelter upon lies and what they are, they don't even have a consciousness like John Bunyan who said, Let me die with the Philistines. And there Samson says, Lord, I don't want to die with these Philistines. Provide me the altar for the first time in Enochare. Lord God granted him the grace. A born Nazarite, if would have known the teachings of my Christ very accurately, not even to tell and share with your wife. A man's life which would be ended up with the work of Delilah asking those Philistines kings to come once again. He has told me all of his heart. Only by getting a razor upon his head, he would lose his trust. That doesn't mean the strength was in the hair. The way how Isa left for that red pottage, his birthright. So Samson left the right fear of the Lord of a God by sharing his birthright to a woman. Disobedience always makes a man to fall. 
that was the life of Samson. The hairs were nothing. It was not about the hairs we need to talk. But disobedience to the commandment of the Lord of a God has led him to such process. Even such today our Lord of a God demands in our eyes. Though we are all ekeneketesis, denying the word in the world, in the present world, which is nothing but a smell of a dead body, rottenness everywhere. In Genesis 6, our Lord our God remembers us that man's heart is continually evil. Jeremiah 17, 9, he quotes for us that this heart is desperately wicked. And looking upon the present people, life's attitude. You can easily understand how wicked they are. They are not even worried about the fellow men that they shall be saved. When we talk to them the right gospel, when we have been trained to become walking Bibles. They haven't been worried about that at all. And yet the fellow Christians themselves, they have become a stumbling block. They haven't been able to maintain that essence from water to wine, whatever Lord of God has made them. And yet these people, not making disciples, not training them up in the right word of the Lord of God, have put for themselves stumbling blocks. The Lord of God says, the fat and the strong one, I will make them into my judgment. I will judge them because they haven't been listening to the word. The present Christendom pastors who love to look upon the reverendship and who say if you don't have the reverendship you cannot preach in our pulpits. Don't worry, we don't even have our theological degrees for us. We have only the heavenly theological degrees. What we have tasted with my Christ. Union with Christ, anointing of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, experiences from where the temptations of Satan arise. Once we have been fortified in Christ, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to vex, not to deceive, no matter whatever it is, always walking peripetao and always marching to know more about the Apocalyptic Epinosis knowledge of his word. We love to be aware about the cunning fables of Satan as Paul says we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. But rather we are about we are aware about it from where it comes, thus knowing and enjoying the experiences of the temptations of Satan. And putting it to death by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. We have this heavenly degrees qualified. Being made a spectacle to the angels and to the world, said the Apostle Paul. And we shall not handle this word corruption, but we shall handle it with great honesty, said of a Lord of a God through the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, John 1.18, exegeomai, the order of the pulpits, exegesis. No matter whatever the trends may run in your church, if you're not coming every day by taking up your cross and following my Christ, if you don't hate your own brother or wife or sister or mother or father to the word of the Lord of a God, then you cannot be my disciples of the Lord of a God. That's what abiding in Christ is all about. And if you don't abide in Christ, you cannot do nothing, says the word of the Lord of a God. Take up your cross and follow my Christ. Come to Bible doctrine every day, every day, every day, not weekly ones. Every day come back and learn. You have been called to become the witnesses of his glory in truth. Tomorrow when you go back home, you will have a tough time. The tough time not to become a witnesses for this truth. A tough time that you haven't enjoyed the grace of the Lord of God to the fullest. To labor in you mightily. Because he is a Lord God of peace and he has given for us peace with God through Christ. We need to enjoy the peace of God. Therefore he is Lord God of peace, the great shepherd of the sheep. And above all, he is the only one wherewith he says he is going to stabilize you.
the word catarizo for the catarismon process given to us in the church age. Dear brethren, every word of the Lord of our God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is so great to understand. Lord of a God who brought us again from the dead, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, because of the blood of his everlasting covenant, make you perfect. It is not telelios, but it is katarizo, to make you to fit sound, to mend, to repair, to equip you, to strengthen you, to make you perfect and complete, to make you what he ought to be. to adjust and to mend and to perfect you, to restore you, to prepare you in every, not just simple things, but past, panta, every, every breath to be enjoying the real and genuine life by partaking in the elements of the Lord of our God as we read in John 6, Zoe, double to, double to court. The real and genuine life a life which is a blessed one not only to enjoy the portion in the heaven but also to enjoy right now in this church age the life what christ our lord of our god demands for us that we as true believers in christ need to look so that we could be the sore great strong sword of the lord of our god to punish by slaying out that which is against the will of lord god the father in heaven the true and genuine life, the life of a great vigorous one, the life where every believer can truly enjoy it provided they are constantly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, the life of active and vigorous one devoted to Lord of a God, blessed in every portion on this world even in the things to come in the heaven. We can enjoy this life not only in the times of this earth what we are but also to enjoy our life in the times that we are going to take place in the church age. Thus he says, he is going to establish you in every good work that may include your Bible work, that may include your Bible translation, that may include anything which relates to the great infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God teaching to them dispensationally so that you could be free from the denominational loopholes the denominations what we have come up with Pentecostal crowds which they talk about in tongues and say that you have been matured if you don't talk in tongues they say you are not have been baptized in the Holy Spirit if you have been not talking in tongues they feel that you have been not baptized therefore you can have demon attacks these are the men who have been influenced by such false teachings in our pulpits today. What the word says, go back and look, not the what you can assess in your thinking, not being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. What the word of the Lord of God teaches for us that you access in at least reading such biographies of John Bunyan, Charles Spurgeon or the terms pertaining to C.H. McIntosh. The great men who led their life as per the demands of the word of the Lord of a God. Not what you think you are doing is great, dear brethren. Eve was deceived by listening to Satan. The head is always Christ, the last Adam, Eve being the church. We cannot listen to false teachings, corrupt teachings. Teachings away from exegiomai, teachings away from isagogics, teachings away from dispensations and grow up. You cannot. There is a great design given by Lord God the Father for us in this church age to follow according to his SOP. It demands that you be always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because for that great shepherd of the sheep he has ordained some male bona fide gifted pastor teachers in every generation not only with the work of poiman but also to become poiman didaskalas that's in the original Greek and some, tra some translations for example in Telugu we can find it's pastor teacher PT 
The mental agony of my Christ, what we need to fulfill, says Apostle Paul, at least my role I'm paying. Therefore, I'm pure from the blood. I have thought to give you every word. And he says, I'm pure from your blood day and night for a span of three years. I thought to you the word of the Lord of our God, therefore I'm pure from your blood. I cannot have it upon my head any longer. These false teachers were entering into a pulpit. Changed the designation from pastor teacher to pastor. Because it's a tough thing to ready and teach. They think it's better for me to become a brother. It's better for me to become a reverend. Because they want to have that reverence. <laughs> Forgetting that reverence belongs only to my Christ as his title. He is holy and reverent, says the word. And they think now they can become holy and reverent. How much do they want to corrupt the word? The earthly degrees may qualify you in these terms. The heavenly degrees will make you to understand union with Christ. Heavenly degrees will make you to understand the anointing work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The heavenly degrees will make you to realize the experiences of the temptations from where Satan would rise you up. And it would give you not to dishonor his word, not to corrupt his word. It will be better for you to die than to corrupt his word, says the Bible. And that great heavenly word which is our life. For those who have been to know the word of the Lord of our God in those heavenly degrees. Have been really enjoying the fear of the Lord of a God because they are mourning every day that their people are perishing without knowing this truth. And the word of the Lord of a God says, Blessed are they that mourn. And the Greek word for that mourn, where many people think in their terms to understand it, but we need to go back to the Greek. The strong code number for it is 3996. Do you know what it is? Lament. Taken from 3958, which is nothing but sorrow. A sorrow, the death of your beloved person or your friend or your loved one. It has two senses. The experience which you undergo in a good sense for to be well experience and undergo of which you go in a bad sense that is to be of a sick person and then you die you suffer and you wax so here he says pantheo the people who lament for as jeremiah 315 says the shepherds of lord god's own heart who shall feed you with great knowledge and wisdom and here, the word says for us, they shall be comforted. The Greek word is para kaleo, para alongside kaleo, to call. And the word meant to say to console, to encourage, to strengthen. And it also meant to say to instruct, to teach. What do they do? Instruct and they teach. Are you mourning, lamenting for the right word of the Lord of a God in your life? The Lord's desire is to instruct you and to teach you the right way that you need to go. Go back and look into the history. Go back and look and learn from the Bible here. They haven't been called the reverend of the sheep. He has been called Megapoiman, the great shepherd of the sheep. Even the same code used for a pastor in 4166 code in Ephesians 4. The gifts being distributed to the church for the edification of them till all could come to the knowledge of my Christ according to the full stature of his fullness. He gave some pastor teachers the right designation. It is not pastor even either. It's pastor teacher or the Greek context goes to say for us teaching shepherds. If there are no teaching shepherds, how can you mourn? The first thing we need to be pathos, depending only upon Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be pure. 
the second thing we need to mourn don't mourn for the terms of your material things if you're patakos in the spirit the kingdom of heaven belongs to you because you depend only upon Lord God the Holy Spirit and then he says meek pravas gentleness of spirit humbleness and mildness of disposition and the word says for us they shall inherit the earth and hungering and thirsting for the righteousness they shall be filled and then we have to look blessed are the pure in heart katharas for they shall see the Lord of a God and you know why these things dear brethren that we need to comfort you because it is Lord God the Father who shall make you perfect in every good work Oh, in doing his will Thelema will of God the Father what he has given for us that which is well pleasing working in you that is what again we find the word Poeo working that which is good and acceptable in the sight of God the Father because through us to whom Lord God the Father be glory for eon and for eon Sometimes Christ my Lord my rock would have thought Why at least me being involved in the Trinity Why at least this people whom everyone whom our Lord God the Father gives to them Not understanding the scripture in John 8 47 They there out of Lord God the Father will listen to his words why at least this man may be in us in our Trinity group the royal family of God on the contrary we the church age believers are not able to realize why the Trinity is indwelling in us and if large counsel is that he needs to indwell in us he knows very well to that one third of the angels which went along with Satan to fulfill with this church age this will be the papal to the praise of his glory to the highest performing and doing only that which is the will of Lord God the Father in heaven and nothing else than that keeping this people in mind the water though it has turned into wine he said yet the best is yet to come and that's what we the church age believers have to be till the time of the rapture dear brethren this great life unique life learning to live a life satisfied in Christ learning to exalt the name of my Christ to the highest it chastens us to partake in the divine elements of the Lord of his divine holiness he abases us so that we should be exalted the people may think we are fools to handle this word accurately every day what is it every day he is going to preach for one hour grace before judgment for you the Lord God knows very well the people may say Lord your student preached they sat and preached but there was none who could kneel and preach but yet through us Christ our Lord our God kneels and preaches as Apostle Paul says I bow my knees for this cause for your sake we bow our knees for your cause to preach and to teach so that there shall not be any excuse for you to claim and yet the strength of the Lord of God to make our knees like iron to kneel down and write his word to kneel down and make the terms pertaining to 22 times as we have been covering it from 22 to 66 times we did it the first seven times kneeling down and reading the word the next seven times kneeling down for the purpose of the Lord of God 
to enter, to sleep. The lion and the bear concept we read. To kneel down and write the Bible at least once. You know, whichever translation you go through. The second time kneeling down and writing the Bible in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic transliterations. In the interlinear what you call. A slaving the lion. And then now you are ready to slave the Goliath. 22 times kneeling down and writing in honoring of every alphabet of the Hebrew. From the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Which way you want to go, you decide, dear brother, and that's your life. We are not making everyone to do the same burden. But everyone has equal privilege and equal opportunity to do it. Thus you cannot handle the word of the Lord of a God in corruption. It will be better for you to die with the Philistines, that is what, with the people who are uncircumcised. Knowing not the glory of the Lord, they celebrated that their God, Dagon, gave them their enemy into their hands. But who it was, the breaking of the Nazarite oath led him to fall. And the scripture writes very clearly, till he, is grow, till he has grown back his hair. Till that time the people did not come to celebrate the festival, to give a great sacrifice to Dagon. The purpose of the Lord God, everything has meaning in that. The Milka and Ekav incident has a meaning in them to understand whether this were by nature or by the hand of the Lord that is against us. They went straight into that field and then they realized it was by the hand of the Lord. That's how hard a man is. Because he does not fear the Lord to learn. He wants to learn. Showing the greatest hardness ever. The way Pharaoh who drowned in the river Red Sea. Such hardness is the heart of this man. The highest hardness, Pharaoh. Even you look upon the miracles, there as well, Janus and Jambres, which stood. They did the same thing, but Aaron's rod, but Aaron's rod took out or took in, it swallowed up the remaining snakes. They cannot understand these words. Yet they rejected the Lord. And where did they end up? They ended up in the Red Sea. Though Lord our God examines them to come back with a warning discipline, encouragement by the fellow believer, don't do that, walk in the spirit of my Christ, do not grieve, do not squelch, but rather be controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They would not fear. The second time he goes, taking you till to the point of death and releasing you so that you could know now at least the importance of the right word of the Lord of our God. Yet you don't change. Then sin unto death. Why do you want to die sin unto death, dear brother? The Lord's will is not to perish. He has stretched forth his hands against you till and he says, come. There is no pleasure of the wicked in the mind of my Christ. Because there is no pleasure for him to see the death of the wicked perishing out. And yet what do we find in the church age? People love to die, sin unto death, every day. And they mourn for it. But they don't mourn while they're alive, as Proverbs 8, 34 through 36 says. Day by day, those who wait upon the doorposts of the Lord of our God, says the scripture, they shall love life. And those who love the word of the Lord of our God, they shall love life. Upon the doorposts who do wait, doctrine says, blessed are they. And those who reject the word of the Lord of our God, they hate life and love death for what you are lamenting think over that John Bunyan lamented for the words which he says let me die among the Philistines rather than corrupting this heavenly blessed word of the Lord of our God and how true and pure we need to be today as pastor teachers training up and teaching up his words Think over these issues, dear brother. Life is too short. The responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. 
the trainer to make up every believer perfect and complete in all knowledge of his glory is our work and greater the time we spend not understanding the word of the Lord our God the greater we are really deceiving ourselves for the true life for the true calling by enjoying a life in all things real and genuine active and vigorous that great blessed portion in Christ to be immortal till the work of my Christ has been done in our lives dear brethren and rebound and get back to the fellowship of flat God the Holy Spirit if you are a believer and still unbeliever to know and to enjoy these things believe in Christ you shall be saved The prince of the power of this air has blinded the eyes of these unbelievers not to know because it transforms itself into the angel of light by not making them to know this glorious gospel, the free grace. Faith alone in Christ alone. Believing upon Christ we shall be saved, says the word. And what else do we have in the churches, dear brethren? To honor his word above his name, to move from glory to glory, from milk to bread, from bread to meat, by casting our stumbling blocks and waiting for the praise of the Lord of our God to the highest. Think over these issues, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine presence of Lord God the Father, understanding and performing His will, at least a little part like Apostle Paul, what he says to Christ. We at least a little part like Apostle Paul, following the examples of this great man, Let's search our hearts to become faithful pastor teachers and not to never to corrupt his infallible and inerrant word. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without it. Honorably telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest part is to care so thon lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond of my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond of my witnesses our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic ocean by witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, you decide. Life is too short, and the responsibility to lay down upon our shoulders is too large. Think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to handle thy word accurately according to thy will, according to thy purpose, O Lord. Father, see if there is an offense way in us, O Lord. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. Such as diligently, Father. What else do we want on this earth, O Lord? Then to have this bona fide gift of the word to handle it accurately and to stand before thy presence as unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we have done it to the praise of your glory to the highest. And Father, if you would have been over here, through thy Son, you have done marvelous works in this flesh. Yet, O oh Lord, you are so holy. And yet you have given us to reach the new man from water to wine, transformed. From the power of all sin nature to be all the time under the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And yet you desire a habitation in us, O oh Lord, to dwell in us, to the praise of thy work. Through the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Father, help us, O oh Lord, to do thy will. And see if there is an offense to reign as O oh Father. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and eternal challenge us by this message.